Accreditation in Decentralized Law Accreditation is the service of vouching for the quality of a good or service, or the action or process of officially recognizing someone as having a particular status or being qualified to perform a particular activity. If a person or group has a reputation for promoting and maintaining high standards, their recommendation will be valued by those trusting in that certification of quality. They place their reputation on the line to recommend or certify products or services as having met certain standards. Because the non-aggression principle is essential for protection of peace and freedom, and because it is first and foundational as a moral principle, setting protections against physical hindrance to life or property, it is true that non-aggression must be consistently applied, if even unconventional, for civilization to truly flourish. This means that accreditation may not be monopolized, and therefore, any accreditation must come through the merits of reputable accreditation service. If one source of accreditation chooses to monopolize over all other sources of accreditation, this inevitably means that there will be initiatory violence imposed in order to gain and maintain that monopoly. Initiatory violence which is the use of force on peaceful people, is against the foundational moral standard of non-aggression by which societies must be built in order to have lasting peace and prosperity. Example, a restaurant may certify that it is clean and that its food is fresh, but a third party that has a good reputation for certifying restaurants for quality may be hired to ensure the quality by setting standards, conducting random inspections, and and so forth. The measures agreed to for the certification will be up to the parties involved. Restaurants in decentralized law are under no requirement or obligation to subscribe to such accreditation services, but it may be their preference to do so if customers pay more or are more inclined to visit because of this accreditation. No law can be in place that requires a restaurant to undergo inspection or obtain certification, nor can there be requirement for permits or licenses, because such is the course of law monopoly and appeal to authority, which authority does not have validity. Such requirements also violate the non-aggression principle upon which civilizations must be built in order to prevent the same mistakes that have happened repeatedly in civilizations throughout history. Accreditation is a matter of reputation, not authority. There must not be monopoly of accreditation. There must be no agency or organization that has the power to force a business out of service due to its not having been certified by a particular group. Governments certainly can shut down colleges, hospitals, restaurants, and other businesses and organizations if they do not meet the approval of that government. This is initiatory violence, which is in violation of the non-aggression principle. Government is then able to use its monopoly of accreditation to extract wealth because it is able to set the rules of each player in this game of life, which has been rigged to its favor at the expense of others. And this is in violation of the non-aggression principle. If it is not voluntary, it is forced, which is immoral, and it is immorality that leads to regrettable circumstances. Governments claiming authority over just about every inch of known land in the world, it is important to apply onto their positive claim of authority the burden of proof for said authority, and it is upon looking for this proof that the inability to ascertain such claims becomes overwhelmingly apparent. It is not that governments are good at assuring quality that makes them accreditation monopolies, but rather that they threaten by force to shut down those who do not want to operate as they dictate. Might will never be authority. If one does not want to spend more for greater quality assurance, one is not required to do so in decentralized law. If one chooses to eat in a restaurant that has no third-party certification, one is able to do so. No group or groups may impose a universalized standard by which all hospitals, colleges, and so forth must operate. Except, of course, the non-aggression principle, which is first and foremost in morality and 
and civilized living. There is no universal guarantee of certain standards in decentralized law, except for the non-aggression standard, which would ever remain standing because it would be universally depended on in all matters throughout the human experience into the future. What may appear to some to be a downside of decentralized law is that there would be no universal guarantee of quality within any region, or rather, no appearance of universal guarantees of quality. Some or most governments seek to gain a blind trust of their people so that their passing of a law will be deemed adequate as protection from undesirable outcomes. Drugs are deemed safe if they are legal. Food is deemed to be adequately healthy if allowed by the government. Doctors are automatically trusted if they passed government approved schooling. Police are trusted to serve and protect without abuse. One major concern for these government certifications is that they are not based in reputation. Competition for excellence and reputability is not the function of government services. The function is instead the use of authority to assert safety, reliability, and quality. Employers would use resources of their choosing to determine whether a candidate having graduated from a specific school would be fit for the position offered. There there would be no nationalized standard of what is acceptable as a qualification for education in any given field. Customers would use their trusted sources to determine whom to give their business. Employers wanting to ensure that their candidate is fit for the job would conduct verification and as would be an option, may choose to require testing of candidates for their acquisition and retention of knowledge. Organizations would gain trust based on their performance. Rather than there being one blanketing standard, there would be diversity of standards competing for excellence so as to gain economic benefit. Customers would need to be wise in their selection rather than trust too willingly, as can be the case in places where nationalized standards are in place. Knowing that there is a spectrum in standards is generally a requirement to seeking higher standards. Tools and technology help individuals sort out information and ratings for easy reference. This would be implemented to much greater capacity in an atmosphere of decentralized law. Merit and reputation would need to be quickly retrievable by trusted sources. Qualifications of professionals would need to be reliably sourced for those who want that verification before they become customers. Technology would be key in sorting this information and making the decision process easier. This heightened dependency on reputation would shine even greater light on quality instead of unwitting expectation for mediocrity. Fraud being a violation of the non-aggression principle as a means to steal by getting consent through deception. Acts of fraud provable to a resolution service may be determined to have in fact occurred. Each case given transparency of process by which determinations are reached can show to others the validity and impartiality of these decision-making procedures. Thus, it is more possible for other firms and individuals to know what level of defense to give the offending party in the case, and more possible to have peer-reviewed examination of what transpired, making also the possibility of establishing strong basis for decision outcomes. Putting all of this in other words, it is showing the world that the decision was not reached in secret as a paid ruling or with other biased factors to stand up to the scrutiny and skepticism of onlookers in such a decentralized environment. Unquestionable transparency, overwhelming evidence, and very thorough process would be the mark of any service to be given reputable, reputational validity. In such a decentralized society, industries of media and law would have to work much harder to show impartiality, as their credibility would heavily depend on this in such open competition. This is the free market applied consistently rather than exempting certain industries like law from the requirement to allow openness of competition. Unlike now with the use of initiatory violence to maintain monopoly, the non-aggression principle being foundational to peace and freedom, it must be valued widely for decentralization to work. And it is valued widely already. And it is so naturally critical to the function of every life that a world that has reached the awakened state of realizing individual sovereignty would not revert back into delusions that some apes are somehow fit to own other apes. 
Follies and fallacies of every kind would be the objective of the average person to see through. There would be significant market efforts to bring schemes and scams to light, even entire industries dedicated to this, because of how needed it is to those who realize they deserve sovereignty over being lied to and ruled. We would see exponential increase in widespread awareness of methods used to deceive and manipulate, and how to avoid them, including those methods used by governments and media. Beware the lollipop of mediocrity. Lick it once, and you'll suck forever. Brian Wilson, The Beach Boys. Credibility comes from reputation for all businesses and individuals. If an individual is not credible due to having been dishonest, unreliable, or unpredictable, the individual cannot use authority to assert that he or she is credible. Governments simply eliminate competition so that mediocre credibility standards seem adequate, there being nothing to compare them to. Government standards seem adequate to many, even a majority. Parents of students in public school, patients in hospitals, students of colleges, employers, people calling for police intervention, all of these and many more are given one mediocre standard to expect from these services. Because the accreditation services have been monopolized, competition of standards is almost non-existent within any given region. No competition of courts means that the court process will be annoying and unnecessarily inconvenient for most or all parties involved. Police service is a monopoly, and as such can offer only one mediocre standard through which people can expect conduct. These and many other services of law have been declared credible by the use of authoritarian decree, and because competition with these services is generally prohibited and forcefully prevented, there is no choice but to accept this mediocrity. Similarly, governments set universalized standards for many industries, and with many of said industries, there are not added benefits to surpassing said universal standards because expectation for greater is not very common. Reputation did not grant credibility, but monopoly created the illusion of credibility. Monopoly of accreditation does not measure credibility, but only asserts it. Credibility is for the discernment of individuals in an atmosphere of choice where discernments can be made. Where there is no choice, there is no contrast by which to discern credibility. This is not dissimilar to the assertion that the sun orbits the earth. And for centuries, having no competing ideas to bring challenge to the one standing theory. Inasmuch as one can know that one store strives harder than another to provide customer satisfaction, choice is required for determining credibility. If all that one knows is dwelling in tents, they cannot know that life in a mansion is for what they would strive. Without governments to rig the game of life, we will see much greater possibilities.